Hello and welcome to my latest preview which is DigiKeys for iPad. DigiKeys is a pattern-based MIDI sequencer, which allows you to chain together a series of patterns into a song. But the clever bit here is that because it generates MIDI data, we can choose either the internal sound engine, which you're hearing here, or if running under something like AUM, you can route the output of the 16 tracks to individual AUV3 external instruments. Let's take a closer look at what DigiKeys has to offer. Now, although DigiKeys is an AUV3 plugin uh, and should ideally be running under something like AUM, uh, I'm running in standalone mode just for demonstration purposes. And here I'm going through the creation of a new project, and you can see we're asked for what kind of sound sources we want to use local, MIDI, or a mixture of both. Now, in this case, I'm going to just use local sound sources to give you an idea of how the program works and give you a look at the interface. Now at the top left you can see uh, an effects routing section with a delay, a reverb and a chorus flanger. Um, here you can adjust the global settings and adjust the return settings for each of those three global effects. And to the right of that you can see a 8 band graphic equaliser which is used for uh, EQing the output. And to the centre of the interface, we've got the tempo and sync functions, which work in a similar manner to uh, DigiStick. So we could either uh, lock the tempo to the host, or we can use the internal tempo of the sequencer. Now below the effects is the 16-channel audio mixer, but it's not an audio mixer in a conventional sense. It actually scales MIDI velocities of notes coming in and out of DigiKeys. And below the faders you'll find a mute switch which uh, blocks incoming and outgoing MIDI data for that channel. And below the mixer is the note construction grid. Now the first thing you want to do is set up a key and scale for your song. And this ensures that any notes input into the grid will match that scale. Now the series of controls to the right of the pattern grid allow you to select the pattern that you're currently editing. And the pattern length which can be up to 32 steps. Now the pattern construction grid only shows 16 steps of the sequencer, but you can use these buttons on the left hand side under show range to change the page you're looking at, and it does automatically flip when the sequencer is running. Now you'll notice when we flip to a non-drum track that the notes of the scale appear down the left hand side, but if I tap the all notes button you'll see we can pick a guide chord, and this series of guide chords match the selected scale and can be chosen for each pattern. To the left of the grid is an edit mode which is currently set to paint. In this mode we can tap, hold and drag horizontally to paint notes of varying length. Drag up and down to change the velocity. To change the note length or velocity simply tap on the last beat of the note and drag. Tap anywhere else in the note to delete. Going back to the edit mode and selecting drum rolls allows us to actually do drum fills. Just like we did in DigiSticks. You can drag either left to right or right to left, and then drag up and down to get the maximum velocity of the run. We also have a, an eraser tool which allows us to bulk erase notes, and an option that actually allows us to do fixed velocity runs, which is handy for triggered bass lines or hi-hat runs. Now you'll notice when adding notes I've made reference to dragging up and down vertically for velocity, but we can adjust a number of other parameters uh, if we alter the edit mode, the vertical edit mode. Uh, in particular we can change the probability of a note, so in this case I'm changing the probability to 50%. Um, we can change the subbeats, which means we can add things like triplets, uh, or a run of triplets. And we can change the uh, forward reverse status of a particular beat, if it's an internal sound. 
So let's have a listen to this pattern, in particular to the bass. Notice how I tap and hold on the actual uh, track number to solo the bass. Now this track is actually playing back at half speed and is transposed an octave down, but that can be changed here. To remove the track solo, just tap and hold on the track number. Now let's take a look at the drum track in isolation. In this case, if you notice the closed hats, they're all different velocities. And there's quick ways of editing those velocities to kind of keep the relative volumes of each note. You do this by tapping and holding in the grid header over the actual name of the note or piece of kit. And then just drag your finger up and down to adjust the volumes. Now DigiKeys also includes a random function which allows you to create some interesting patterns. Now I already have a basis here of a drum beat, so let's just disable a few of the drums that we've already got laid down and just randomise the rest. Now since the first attempt was just randomising velocities, let's enable some of the randomised options and see if we can get something a little more interesting. Now before we finish up the editing functions, there's one thing that I haven't talked about, and that's applying effects. Now you'll notice at the top of the screen there's an FX out button. Now when you press this button you'll see this dialog, which allows you to choose the amount of sound that is sent to the three global effects. And if it's an internal sound you can even control the pan. Now below that there's some other options which I need to discuss. The ignore scale button is used mainly on drums, but it bypasses the currently selected scale and outputs chromatic notes to the MIDI connected MIDI device. The MIDI out should be engaged if you want to send MIDI information to uh, external synths. In most cases you want to disable the local sound source if you do that, but it is possible to have both enabled at the same time. And finally, if you wanted to use uh, DigiKeys as a multi-timbral 16 channel audio sound source, you can enable the MIDI in, which allows the mixer to control the volume of MIDI in notes. So it acts as a way of um, adjusting each uh, instrument within DigiStix independently. Now one important thing I forgot to mention is the internal sounds. And basically DigiKeys is using the Chameleon sound engine, which is a sample based sound engine. And if you have Chameleon installed, you'll see an extra button appear in the actual preset browser, which allows you to directly load uh, custom sounds from Chameleon. And finally, you've got all these great patterns, but how do you piece them all together into a song? Now at the bottom of the interface, you'll find a pattern construction grid. And here you'll see 11 patterns that are all chained together into a song chain. Adding a pattern to the chain is simply a question of pressing the add button and selecting a pattern number. To delete a pattern, ensure it's selected and hit the delete button. Now if we select a random uh, step in the chain and press the uh, step options button, you'll notice here that this, this step is repeated twice and pattern 6 is muted. Now this allows you to actually create complex patterns and then unmute various tracks at different stages of the uh, performance. Now if I press play on the sequencer to start the pattern playing, you'll notice it just actually cycles the current pattern, it doesn't actually play the song in the song chain. To do that you have to enable song mode, and if you want the song to loop, you've got to enable the song loop option too. I want you to notice here as well that the first five steps of the song are actually the same pattern number. The only difference here is that steps three and four are transposed by a fixed number of semitones. Notice here I press the pause button. This allows us to pause a song chain and audition things like track mutes and pattern transposition. Now 
although I'm not going to get a chance to cover in this particular video, we also have a controller section that allows you to send things like pitch bend and mod wheel and other controllers to external equipment. We'll cover that in another video. So I think that just about wraps up this video. Um, there's plenty more to talk about, so another video is on its way. But for now, let's just finish off with a couple of uh, test patterns that I produced. I've already gone on for too long and we've only just scratched the surface, but stay tuned for another video on how to use DigiKeys in AUM, especially to drive other AUV3 instruments. But for now, thank you for watching.